Well, welcome everybody, and thank you for taking the time to be with us on our webinar. This webinar is being brought to you by UC Irvine, and today we'll be talking about our post-bac pre-med certificate program. Uh, it's a new program, very fun, and uh, addresses a, a big need in the marketplace. Before we get going, I just wanted to let you know how the webinar works. We do have the audio lines on mute, so use the chat and the Q&A area. And I'm going to draw a little line up here. Uh, up in the right-hand corner, it's off my screen, but it's on your screen, you should see some buttons up there, chat uh, and Q&A, and we'll be monitoring those, uh, both of those uh, uh, tabs, uh, and please feel free to uh, type in any questions. Uh, we really want to make this very interactive. Uh, that makes it uh, more valuable for you guys as you, uh, as you get your specific questions answer. And we're really fortunate to have Hetty Ha with us today. Hetty uh, has been one of the chief architects of this program here at UC Irvine, and she's also been uh, and, and continues to be the uh, program administrator and pre-medical advisor for our own undergraduate biological sciences students and, and related students who are trying to go into uh, health professions. Uh, Hetty, can you hear us? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can. You might want to get a little tiny bit closer to the phone. What I'm going to do is change the role over to you, and you should now have control to go to the next slide. The buttons are up at the top. Okay, I see it, Nate. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And so, um, what I'm going to be going over is about our program. So, our program is is really designed for a career changer program. That is for someone that is graduated or will graduate in a non-science major and has little or no science background and that is interested in pursuing um, healthcare profession. Um, science majors such as the computer science, engineering majors may also still qualify for our program as long as they have not taken too many of the core pre-med courses. This program, for example, is a great fit for a psychology major, um, who wants to be a psychiatrist. It is not uncommon for me to hear that students that have studied the human psychological behavior and now wants to focus more on the chemical reactions of the body and how that affects behavior and possibly maybe hoping one day to become a neurosurgeon or the dance major that decides they want to focus in sports medicine. I have a very unique and diverse pool of students coming from a variety of majors including but not limited to um, economics, political science, music, counseling, business. So don't hesitate to contact me if you're not sure if this program is a good fit for you. Our program title may say pre-medical, but we really strive to work with competitive applicants that want to pursue a majority of health professions. So our goal is, through our program, our primary goal is really just to equip our students with a competitive advantage that will result in acceptance either into a medical school or in a desired allied health profession. So those that are not familiar with UCI Irvine campus, let me give you an introduction about our wonderful school. We have a beautiful campus and it surrounds a 12.5 botanical garden, right? So, um, and our campus is constructed in a circular design so that you're gonna feel like you're in a community learning environment. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary. In 2015, we were ranked first in the nation and seventh in the world for 100 best universities less than 50 years old. Um, top universities, public and private. And so our post back programs will be immersed in a, uh, so you can have confidence that our university, in our university, the level of academia that you'll be exposed to, our post back program students will be immersed in the same science courses as our undergraduate science majors. Um, so you will be in a very challenging environment, okay? And you will learn a lot. And I'll talk a little bit more about our curriculum in a little slides. But the city of Irvine is um, within the top three rankings for national, nationally for high safety ratings for big cities. And if you like the beach, well, the Pacific Ocean is only five minutes away. So 
So through this presentation, you're going to learn about the great lengths of resources that will be available for two students in our program. Primarily, it is a collaboration between three departments, the Francisco J. Ayala School of Biological Sciences, the School of Physical Sciences, and also University Extension. Our classes are taught by our distinguished faculty. Teaching strategies are based on analytical thinking um, in regards to theory and methods, problem-based learning, application. These are the necessary techniques that will give you the needed foundation to really succeed and prepare you for a competitive and challenging health profession curriculum. Learning sciences at UCI goes beyond memorization. If that was what you were used to in high school, it's completely different in a UC setting. Memorization can only take you so far, and there's also limits on how long you can retain this information. But if you are able to really understand something, how something works, you're really able to apply it and to better understand it in greater detail. We often get feedback from our science majors that go through uh, they're currently going through or have gone through the health professions curriculum, and they come back informing us how helpful having taken the core pre-med sciences at UCI has helped them adjust quicker to the intensity of the health professions curriculum. So if you are looking for a challenging curriculum that will prepare you for a future career in medicine, I assure you that this program is really a good fit for you. So giving you an idea about our curriculum, what you are going to be exposed to while you're in our program, we are a quarter system institution. So basically, uh, typical enrollment is basically fall, winter, and spring quarter. But our program is a two-year program. So in, in addition to a regular term, a fall, winter, and spring, you will also be enrolled in summer. So it's a consolidation of basically three years' worth of regular academic um, science curriculum and accelerated into a two-year, year-round program with enrollments in two summers. Now, our summers are broken down into um, summer session one, summer session two, and 10 weeks. And summer session one and two are five-week sessions. But our students will actually be enrolled in both summer session one and two, and our class begins in mid-June, and late June, actually, around June 20th is about the time. So giving you an example of our year one curriculum, so our students will be immersed in an accelerated general chemistry class for both summer session one and two. And then they'll also be enrolled in, and I put an asterisk here because this is a scientific prep course. And so it's designed specifically and solely for our post -bac students. It's a very small class size. Enrollment is restricted to post -bac students. And um, course, the courses will help students mitigate problems between taking general chemistry concurrently. And it's also a nice refresher for math and physics, which will ultimately help you guide you through the program. And then there's also a biological science safety and ethic course, which basically goes over how to safely and ethically conduct yourself in a laboratory setting. And then you'll finish off that last bit of that general chemistry in fall, and then you'll start working on your organic chemistry with labs. You'll be taking um, core bio classes such as genetics, biochemistry, and molecular biology. And then you'll also be immersed in some elective courses. Now, elective courses meaning such as anthropology, sociology, psychology, those are all new topics that are going to, that are on currently in the new MCAT, but these are also very common social science courses required for admissions into many allied health professions. Many of our students may have completed the courses before entering their program, so I basically review how long ago they've taken it, how well they've done, before making the recommendations to either retake or encourage them to look into something else. So if you're a psych major, we're probably not going to ask you to take that course again unless that's been a long time or if you didn't receive a strong grade. But we really work with our students into catering a study list that works for them. Um, we are a formal structured program. However, we do allow for some flexibility with certain course selections depending upon um, when they have taken, how long ago, their strengths, their needs and prerequisites catered to their career goals. Now, this. There are certainly a lot of commonalities in regards to prerequisites for health professional programs, but schools and programs may have some distinct differences in courses that they will require for consideration. 
So our pre-med students may, may not exactly need the physiology or the immunology lab. It will be nice to have that on their record and to show strength in those types of sciences. While, for example, if a student with a pre-atometry, we understand that they necessarily really do need those classes to meet prerequisites. Um, to meet prerequisites. And so uh, we work with our students in regards to their study list, though it is a very structured program. And then here you'll see a health professional development seminar that actually goes through the entire two-year curriculum. And that is something that I'll talk about a little bit more in a, a later slide. But going into your second summer, you're going to take a scientific writing class. And this is a course that's going to prepare you to tackle on our upper division um, biological science labs, which have intense amount of writing. And then there's biostatistics. You go into your second year finishing calculus-based physics and then um, elect upper division courses and the electives on your needs, and then again, the health professional seminar. So in regards to tuition, I have to say our tuition rates are very competitively affordable compared to other career changer programs out there, not only in California, but nationally. Um, so if you look at it, we have a $100 application fee, but then our cost per unit is also $399. So with an average annual tuition cost about less than $21,000. Um, keep in mind, though, our program is a year-round program. Now looking in comparison to other programs in California, um, career changer programs in California as well as nationally, um, the average cost per unit is about $578.19 with a rare variable range between $293 to $750. So we're a very com a competitively affordable program. And when you're looking at other one-year career changer programs, you're going to see about a cost range between about $21,000 to about $33,000, and that is for a nine to 10-month program. Our program is estimated less than 21000 and that's for year-round. So you're going to school summer, fall, winter, and spring, and then again. So looking into our program in greater detail, you're really, you're really going to have a very holistic pre-health experiences, and that is why this program is designed that way. Um, you're going to have access to a lot of um, unique resources. Our goal is to make sure that you have the resources needed to be a competitive applicant. We want to make sure that you are covered in all aspects in the application process. We want you to be confident when the time comes for you to apply. Now, in regards to advisors, you are going to, and I'm very excited to say this, but you will have access to the largest pre-health counseling group you have ever known in one centralized location. We recognize that science curriculum is very parallel to admissions pre-requirements for health professions, so therefore all our academic advisors for the Ayala School of Biological Sciences are also pre-health advisors, and you will have access to all 11 of us. It really makes sense to have an academic advisor that knows the ins and outs of the curriculum and the enrollment to be advising you on pre-med and pre-health. In regards to curriculum, our curriculum is rigorous. Our faculty will challenge you. You will have access to free tutoring um, for all basic science courses, and tutoring is provided by peer tutors. And these are students that have taken the courses previously, they excelled in them, and now they're upperclassmen, they applied for the position, they went through an interview process, they wanted the job, and now they are sitting in the exact same lectures as you will be and generating studying material to help you prepare for midterms and exams. In regards to enrollment in the courses, it's a very simplified process and students do not need to worry about whether they'll get the class or not. Our program uniquely guarantees enrollment in all basic science courses, and we're able to do that because of the collaboration we have with the three departments. It is a com community learning environment, and students in the program will be em enrolled in majority of the classes together with their cohort you will be immersed in the same classes as other science majors, but you will be together. 
And it's a really camaraderie environment that you will go through this challenge together, support one another, and also we hope that you will meet frequently inside and outside of the classroom setting. In regards to test preps and workshops and special health profession events, these are all part of the experience of being in our program. One of the most um, unique resources that you will have in this program is the professional development seminar, which is very near and dear to my heart because I designed the seminar exclusively for our postdoc students. It is a series of meetings that I have with my postdoc students throughout the quarter on a quarterly basis, multiple times throughout the entire two years. We will get to know each other very well, and you will get to know your cohort very well. This is, the seminar is really designed to go everything, go over everything from journaling how to journal, reflection, reflection why it is important to, why is it that you want to be a healthcare professional? Um, what are you doing now to get there? Writing your personal statement. I tell students all the time, a personal statement requires a significant amount of time. It is like a piece of art that will evolve over, over the course of two years. You don't just sit there and make one masterpiece in one setting. And so by the end of the year, two years, you really will have a very well thought out personal statement about you. You'll be, you'll also in the Health Professionals um, Development um, Seminar, you'll also practice interviews, presentations, current events in healthcare, identifying target schools. The goal of this class to help you feel confident and be prepared for the time that you are done and applying for healthcare professional program. So there are great incentives to being a student that does well in our program. Um, research is a very unique to UCI because we are a strong research oriented institution. We look into, we look, if you look into other post bat programs, research is not part of the structure of the curriculum and is not part of ours either. However, if you do well in our program, we want to give you the opportunity to invest in research. And this especially is great for students that had no prior research exposure. Scholarships, we offer a scholarship after your first year, and that is for our high achieving students, basically with a cumulative GPA of a 3.5. And basically, we will give our students $1,000 towards any test prep company of their choice. It's a great incentive. Um, and year two, um, for you can be eligible for a letter of recommendation, basically if you have been continuously maintaining this GPA into year two. Now, I want you to understand that the value of this letter of recommendation not only reflects basically um, it not just, uh, it goes over the t entire time period that I have interacted with you for the two years. So it's a really holistic, all, very um, inclusive letter of recommendation. And so um, students that really do well in our program, I really look forward into writing this type of letter of recommendation for you. Our admissions requirements are basically um, a completion of a undergraduate degree at a U.S. accredited institution. Students that are currently in progress of completing their undergraduates are still eligible to apply as long as they met all their, um, they completed their degree and met all criteria no later than the end of spring semester quarter. Classes cannot be in progress in summer because you actually start in summer. And this year our program starts on um, June 20th and we'll have orientation a little bit um, earlier than that. In regards to a cumulative GPA, we have a minimum of a 3.0 for consideration, but we do recommend a GPA of a 3.2 or higher. We do require one year of English composition with a, a B minimum GPA. And then in regards to math, we require two semesters or quarters of single variable calculus or one semester of calculus and one semester of statistics with a minimum GPA of a 3.0. And then um, if students have taken their SATs or ACT scores, we will require that a score is, um, is noted on their application. If you were a transfer student that originally started out at a community college and did not take the SAT or ACT, you are waived of this requirement. However, if you have taken it, we would like you to report this on your application. 
in regards to most importantly, our students cannot exceed the 25% in regards to pre-math health curriculum to be eligible for our program. This excludes their math requirement, okay? And the reason is because we are a career changer program. Um, and so you cannot have taken too many science classes, otherwise our program will not be able to assist you. Um, and of course, it's, um, students cannot have taken any standardized exam scores, such as MCAT for med, DAT for dental, OAT for optometry, PCAT for pharmacy. You get the idea that basically you cannot have taken these type of standardized exams. And most of you likely would not have taken them because you wouldn't have had the background needed to successfully do well in these programs without exposure into those, those types of science courses. And then um, you need to be a U.S. resident or citizen in order to be eligible to our program. So there's a common question that I get all the time in regards to, um, Hedy, how can I um, improve, um, make myself more of a competitive applicant into this session, uh, into this program? And basically, I do stress that I pay a lot of attention to basically your personal statement. Um, your extracurricular activities um, to show me that you are very motivated to be able to do well in this program. I also take a look at your science classes, how well you've done in them, particularly into the math. And also, if you haven't or if you have taken an introductory or preparatory chemistry class, um, doing well in those classes will definitely help you for, um, for in regards to consideration into our program. So who are we looking for in for um, to for competitive applicants into a program? Well, we're really looking for someone who has a consistency in regards to their academic trend, whether it be average or higher. We want to make sure that you're able to handle a ch challenging science curriculum. We want to make sure that you are motivated and passionate about medicine, and that will help you really get through the process because it is a rigorous curriculum. So you have to be very motivated to be able to succeed and do well. Um, who want individuals with a genuine um, concern and dedicated to serving others. After all, being in a medical profession, you are being a service to your community. And so those are the types of individuals that I look forward into having in our program. So how do you apply? We do have an online application. And basically, you go online, you fill it out, and there's also an essay portion that we limit to 5,000 characters. Um, we require three letters of recommendation, one from a faculty, one from a service. Basically, if you've been out of school for a long time, it could be from your employer, clinical, or community volunteer service. And then the third letter is basically, I'm going to leave it up to you, your choice. But I would refrain from asking relatives or friends. I want you to take advantage to looking for someone who truly knows you well, and also these letters will give us a better picture and an opportunity to really get to know you better. There is a program expectancy contract, and basically it is important that to us that our students maintain full-time enrollment due to the structure of the curriculum, but it will also show um, health professions and missions that you can really handle a full load of courses and do well in them. It will give them more confidence um, that you can do well in their program. We do monitor our students very closely. We want to make sure that our program is going to help them succeed. And so we do have a gradual GPA policy. So your first quarter after your first quarter, you have about a B average. After your fourth quarter, you have about a 3.3 average. And then from there on until you complete our program, maintaining a minimum of that GPA. Now these are just benchmarkers to remain in the program, but certainly um, student, we want students to aim higher. It is important that they continue to strive beyond those benchmarkers to make sure that they are competitive applicants. And of course, attendance in our professional development seminar is essential and required. Uh, we develop these resources to you. We really want you to take advantage of those resources so that you will be prepared for when the time comes for you to apply. We have a very impressive advisory committee. 
um, that is composed of not only the undergraduate school of um, the Ayala School of Biological Sciences, but also the School of Physical Sciences and also UCI School of Medicine. We have Dr. Michael Leon, who is a professor in neurobiology, but he is also the associate dean for the Ayala School of Biological Sciences. David Van Branken is also the associate dean for the School of Physical Sciences, and he's also a professor in chemistry. We have two committee board members from the UCI School of Medicine, um, Dr. Elena Peterson, who's also the Associate Dean of Admissions and Outreach, and also Dr. Uh, Julian Tui, who is a professor in OBGYN from the School of Medicine. Now, Dr. Tui, I wanted to just put in my a few bits of information. She is a true anteater. Um, she's very dear to us. She completed her undergraduate at UCI. She completed um, medical school at UCI and also her fellowship in UCI. And so now she's also serving as a faculty in the UCI School of Medicine. So she really understands the science curriculum that our science majors go through. And so we're very happy to have her on our advisory board. I myself and also the Director of Biological Student Affairs Office for Undergraduates is also on our advisory committee. And this advisory committee is continuously reviewing the program and also making um, suggestions to, to continuously improve the program to benefit our students in the program. We are a certificate program, and basically the general requirements to earn a certificate is a GP, human GPA of a 3.3, completion of 55 units within the following courses listed here, general chemistry, organic chemistry, statistics, and then the selected courses in biological sciences. But to be honest, anyone that goes through our two-year curriculum is going to far exceed these numbers and definitely will be earning their certificate as long as they meet their minimum GPA requirements. So I encourage um, all prospective students to visit our website at postback.bio.uci.edu. There's a lot more information regarding our program posted online, how to apply, frequently asked questions, tuition, curriculum. But I also encourage you to visit um, the contact visit us tab on our website, which will give you, um, which will talk about, will show more opportunities to learn about our program, to meet me in person. Um, and I encourage students to really reach out to me even after this webinar if they're not sure if they're eligible for the program. I am happy to review tr transcripts if a student is not sure if they exceeded to 25% um, science courses. And um, my email is premedpb at uci.edu. And at this point in time, I'm happy to take any questions anyone has. There's a couple of questions, and please, guys, feel free to uh, type in some more questions there. One of the questions was just uh, uh, timing of the courses. Are they typically during the day or at night? Or Sure. That's a very good question. So I tell students, when you're a student, you can basically feel as if you're in a full-time job because it is a full-time curriculum. So your, your, your hours will usually be set between about 8 to 5. That is the amount of time that you should be allocating. Um, we try to have you in more of the um, morning, afternoon, and late afternoon sessions. We try not to put you into the, into the evenings. But as a cohort, you're really going to be taking your classes together. That's one of the unique designs of the program. We want you to be together. We want you to be a support system for each other. And also, when you're in the same classes, it makes it easier for us to um, develop resources catered to this particular group and also set meeting times for our students. Most of our students in our program, we encourage not to be working full time. Part time is okay, but we advise them to hold off if they can until at least they have gested after the first quarter or two. But most of your classes will be during the day and into the late afternoon. Great, thanks, Hetty. I think you you kind of answered one of the other questions, uh, which was uh, which was related to you know can I can I continue to volunteer uh, at a hospital or dental clinic uh, while I'm in this program? 
Sure. And so if, if, you're, if you're ahead of the ball and you're already volunteering at a clinic and you love it, I would encourage you to continue if you can. But certainly I say that when you're investing your time and your money into a program that can really help you academically, the priority should be academic. So I tell students really just try to adjust, give it yourself a quarter or two to adjust before adding additional um, extracurricular activities. These are certainly things that we will be talking about in our professional development seminar and also on a one-on-one -on -one when I meet with you once you're admitted into the program as well in, in regards to timing of when to add things in. Um, but certainly if you're in something, you can certainly continue. I would probably reduce the number of hours that you're involved if you're involved in a lot of hours. I believe that three to four hours a week is not significant and you can definitely continue that. But if you're working more than that, I would say let's adjust to the academics before we add on more. Perfect, yeah, good advice. And a couple other ones. Uh, uh, Michael was asking about uh, what's the typical cohort size uh, for for this group? Oh, great question, Michael. So basically, um, m when we develop this program, I express that it is very important that we maintain a very a, a smaller class size, and a smaller cohort. And that is because I really want to have the time to give all the students in the program the attention that they need, the time that they need, the support that they need to successfully do well in our program and prepare for their applications. And so we are looking to admit anywhere between about 10 to about um, 13 students, and I don't foresee our program ever growing too large because I want to maintain that, that close attention that I am able to provide with my students. And the smaller the group also, the, the cohort will be able to interact better and have more time to interact with each other. Perfect, great answer. And, and a related question, uh, a typical core size um, in these classes, I know it varies quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So that's uh, in regards to class size, okay, so now with regards to, with the exception of the professional development seminar with me and also our um, prep science course that you will be taking in the summer, majority of your classes you are going to be immersed in large lecture halls and that can range anywhere between 200 to 400 students. Now there's a reason why you're immersed in those large lecture halls. See, if every postback student was in the same class together in, 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 in just this one postback class, what's going to happen is that someone's going to have to have A's and someone's going to have to have C's and someone's going to have F's. But if you're immersed in a science curriculum with other undergraduates, when you earn that A, you really earn that A because you are in comparison against a couple hundred other students and so there is no inflation of grades. You really earn that grade. So I hope students in my program, well basically everyone in the program will be earning B's and A's, but it really states a lot about the program because you're competing with other science majors to do well. Absolutely, and I think again the quality and, and notoriety of the, of the people that are doing the lecturing, the faculty that are doing the lecturing is, is certainly an added benefit. All right guys, I, I don't see any other questions. Oh, oh, hey, my God, one other one. How is the transition for students who are used to semesters compared to quarters? That's always a good question. That is a very good question because um, if it is accelerated, I will tell you, because the semester system is about 16 to 18 weeks where the quarter system is 10 weeks and it is fast paced. But I think that the sooner the students try to adapt, the better it is because once you are in a health professionals program, um, the curriculum is far more intense than an undergraduate curriculum. And so our students in a quarter system are better able to adapt quicker to that type of intensity as compared to possibly some semester programs. And so the, we do have some support systems in place in regards to our prep science class that will assist you. And also we have a lot of tutoring options that you can take advantage of with our peer tutors. But it is an adjustment, and I will be honest, you are going to need to adjust how you typically study. But if you are a strong student in, in your um, previous major at your previous semester institution, 
um, that it, hopefully the jump won't be too drastic of a change, okay? And that's the good thing about a post -bac program is our students are typically um, more mature and have adjusted well by the time they apply to a program because they've already earned their undergraduate degree. It's quite different from the jump between high school to college. And so, but it is a matter of adaptability. And I have to say, the students that adapt quicker are the ones that are going to be successful in health professions. And, and Nokasana Sanders, uh, okay, there she goes. She typed it in again. Uh, I only got part of the, the uh, text there. She said, um, what are options for applicants who don't have the, the GPA minimum? Well, in regards, the 3.0 GPA minimum is something that we have to be firm on. Now, if I get an application with someone below that, I definitely will still look at their application. But I encourage at least a minimum of 3.8 because the science courses are really rigorous. And I really want to be able to help someone succeed in our program, but if their GPA doesn't show a consistency or a strong academic trend, they're, 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 they may really struggle in our program. So that's why I encourage students to apply with at least a minimum of a 3.0. And Michael had another <laughs> interesting question. Have there been students in past cohorts uh, that were parents? And uh, congratulations, Michael. I hope you're having fun with your little one. But, uh, <laughs> so, um, so basically, um, post-bac programs we understand are basically for non-traditional, can be for a non-traditional population of students. These are students that may have been in the workforce for eight or 12 years and they have families. And, um, and they have a lot of different responsibilities compared to someone who is just um, out of, uh, fresh out of undergraduate. And so yes, it is very common um, for, for our program to have non-traditional um, students. And to be honest, non-traditional is really starting to become more traditional. If you look at the average um, age, for students accepted into programs such as medical school, the average age is 28, uh, 27 and creeping up to 28. And it's because um, it, it takes a lot more these days to be a competitive applicant for a competitive health professions program. And so, and I think that um, those, those unique life experiences, and especially if you've been in the professional workforce for a while, are going to be additives that make you a unique applicant for the time when you apply. So don't feel like you're out of the norm. You're, you're absolutely become, you are the norm. So don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I, I teach courses in another department, but I've got several students in my course this quarter um, that are, you know, returning vets. I've got one that's a single mom returning vet, and <laughs> just impressive as all I'll get out because she's doing really well in the class. And again, she's she's older. She's got mm -hmm. a, a seven or eight year old daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. She's brought her to class a couple times, and she sat there and been real quiet and nice. Uh, and it's more than anything, it's just impressed me uh, that uh, she's able to do everything that she's able to do with, um, you know, all the extra stuff she's doing. All right, let's see. So, Michael, I had one more question. In the application, is there a place to talk about our extra extracurricular activities? Oh, yes. That application has a lot of spaces for you to talk about a lot of things, including extracurricular activities, volunteer, um, leadership roles, awards, distinguishes, um, scholarships that you may have received. Um, so definitely there's a lot of uh, areas on the applications to your, for you to address that. And then also a part of um, our application process that I, I, I forgot to mention is that there is also an interview process. And so if you're local to the area, you will be invited for an interview to come in if you're a competitive applicant. And if you're out of state, then we'll uh, probably arrange something for us to do a, um, a, a, a web count interview. But um, basically, we want to meet you. We want to really get to know you um, before we make the decision to accept you and before you make the decision to accept us. We want to make sure that we're a good fit for each other. Always a good idea. <laughs> so with that, guys, uh, <laughs> whether it's for school or relationships, yeah, you got, got to work on both sides. So, guys, I don't see any other questions. And Michael, thank you for uh, for being here. We appreciate your your being here and everybody on the call. And for those of us that are the, you guys that are listening to this uh, recorded version, please feel free to uh, contact Hetty directly. 
Uh, there's a lot of value in this kind of interaction that we just had the last five or seven minutes where, you know, people are asking questions and then that spurs other questions. And spending five minutes on the phone is really, really valuable investment that you can make uh, to see how well this might work for you in mapping out your future. And with that, I just want to say thank you, Hetty, as always, for putting together a wonderful presentation and a great program. And thank you to all of you guys for listening. And with that, just have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks again, Hetty. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.